Thousands of migrants are stranded in no man's land between Belarus and the European Union. A human catastrophe, many believe, that's been deliberately engineered by Belarus's authoritarian leader, Alexander Lukashenko. But to his battle-weary opponents, many now in exile, the president's latest departure from international norms is in line with what's gone before. As the crisis was worsening, we went to find out why. On the eastern fringe of the European Union, a worsening crisis is threatening regional stability. For the first time, a regime is bringing in people from the Middle Eastern countries, from faraway lands, deceiving them of easy passage to European Union. Belarus's autocratic government has been pushing tens of thousands of desperate migrants into neighboring Lithuania and Poland making them cross the borders illegally. It's a completely new thing. They are really using people as bullets in this hybrid war. Now, as winter approaches, a humanitarian disaster looks ever more likely. People already say that they are walking through the woods and they see bodies, dead bodies. It's the latest gambit of Belarus's hardline dictator, Alexander Lukashenko. Lukashenko now is taking vengeance against us. We are dealing with a country that is being ruled against the will of its people by a dictator. The crisis comes in the wake of EU sanctions imposed on Belarus after 2020's rigged presidential election. It left a despot in place, human rights in tatters, and opponents at home and abroad in fear of their lives. On Lukashenko's official website, the Belarusian president is often portrayed as a jovial man of the people. One minute he's handing out gifts to sick children. The next, he's limbering up on the ice rink alongside Vladimir Putin. He can be seen handing out medals or giving pep talks to his loyal workers. It's a fantasy that couldn't be farther from the truth. For the last 27 years, Lukashenko has ruled Belarus with an iron fist. For years, any attempt to foster democracy in Belarus has been brutally crushed. So when Lukashenko imprisoned his main opponents in the run-up to last year's election, few were surprised. But one of the candidate's wives, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, then stood in her husband's place to take on the president. At mass gatherings before the poll, millions lined up under the opposition's red and white colours, adding their names to lists in Tikhanovskaya's support, a necessary precaution in a country prone to fraudulent elections. Huge lines uh, were in Minsk, in other cities. These lines showed that people, they are against Lukashenko. It was a mass movement. Such things have never happened in Belarus. People united for the idea that maybe this time we will manage to prove that uh, Lukashenko uh, you know, lost. However, in a dictatorship, there can only ever be one winner. And when Lukashenko was declared president for the sixth time, the hopes of millions of Belarusians turned to anger. Lukashenko's response to the protests was characteristically uncompromising, 
plunging the country into crisis for much of 2020. Всего больше 37 тысяч белорусов прошло через задержание, аресты за период с начала президентской кампании. Санкциями на индивидуалов, бизнесов и экономических институтов, считаемые для того, чтобы финансировать режим, были установлены в ЕУ, чтобы остановить диктатора's cash flow. The people of Belarus are asking for free and fair elections. This is what we want to support. Lukashenko's crackdown also sparked a mass exodus, with more than one in 30 Belarusians fleeing the regime. Since August 2020, we have issued over 170,000 visas, both humanitarian visas for asylum seekers. The domestic conflict has become an international crisis, with Poland and Lithuania becoming the new centers of resistance to the regime. Now we understand the people of Belarus much better. We understand their plight for democracy, for liberty, and the duress under which they are currently being placed by the regime. Now these Belarusians, living in exile, many based in the Lithuanian and Polish capitals of Vilnius and Warsaw, are posing a serious threat to the dictator. I am completely overwhelmed by the respect for the young activists who are in exile. They're very, very active and very brave. I thought about what I can do for uh, people and for revolution. I don't have, um, I don't know, automat Kalashnikov, yeah, I don't have. I don't have pistol, I don't I don't have a poison. Yes. So I have my voice. Ну что, красавчик, чики чики чики, сейчас погадаю вам на запрещенных бачебеках так усю правду расскажу. Ай, не 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 не. Margarita Levchuk has enraged Lukashenko with her comic songs lampooning the dictator and his henchmen. The opera star was performing in Vilnius when she got word that the authorities were after her and counts herself very lucky. I think about people who are now in prison, so for them it's not good, yes, I think. And for me it's good because I'm free. So not depression, please, Margarita. Not uh, don't cry, please, because you are free. You can breathe. You can see the sky, and they cannot. Margarita has been demonized on Belarusian state TV. This program, entitled Order of Judas, features a different opposition figure every week. The implicit threat is all the more chilling, given Lukashenko's long-suspected habit of assassinating dissidents for which the regime has never been held to account. No Они уже убили сколько человек. Они это знают, да. Andrei Ostapovich was once a senior investigator at the Belarusian Ministry of Interior. He's too now in exile and is behind the opposition's Bipol data project, collecting information on former colleagues suspected of crimes against humanity. В сети очень много. На каждого человека личные дела самых секретных сотрудников Агентура, резидентура, все посольства. Bipol has amassed dozens of covert audio recordings. In this one, secret police officers brag about the use of torture. Sources at the very heart of the security services leak information which can later be used to prosecute wrongdoers. This includes an alleged audio recording of Deputy Interior Minister Mikhail Kapenkov telling his officers to shoot to kill at protesters. Talks 
about the possibility of eventual trial of the current regime, you know, they are becoming more, uh, ever more louder. Because we understand that the red lines have been crossed. One of the many shocking images from the crackdown is that of protester Yevgeny Zaichin's limp body dragged along the ground by the dictator's feared Omon police. Zaichin was lucky to survive. Now in Lithuania, he, along with many others, is planning to take the regime to court. Да, это нужно. То есть никто же не думал, что такой вот выход на улицу превратится в такую бойню. The Western countries have instruments that were used before in these sorts of cases, in the countries of former Yugoslavia and, and in other cases where the responsible people from the regime go to trial. I'm certain that eventually this will reach this conclusion that those responsible will have to face justice. Of all those now in exile, it is Svetlana Tikhanovskaya who poses the biggest threat to Lukashenko, not least as she is widely recognized as the rightful winner of the presidential election. Now based in Vilnius, her ability to draw thousands to her rallies makes her a potent symbol for the pro-democracy movement. Europe has to understand that there is no uh, way back in this situation. We need to keep pressure on the regime. Tikhanovskaya, seen here in Warsaw with the Polish Prime Minister, is pressing hard for more sanctions and has garnered support from most European leaders. We will discuss different options of sanctions. And there is a um, 3 billion investment and economic package ready to go in the European Union. That is on hold and frozen till Belarus turns democratic. Nevertheless, Lukashenko felt it necessary to double police salaries and give free apartments to combat officers. The cost of keeping his security forces happy is becoming a huge drain on a rapidly dwindling state budget. I mean, regime's situation is fragile at the moment. Businesses understand that they can lose everything supporting him because of sanctions. People in security, they can't walk normally because they are being spied on all the time. And you know, Lukashenko for sure feels this instability of people around him. Indeed, some officials now opt to have their faces blurred when meetings with the president are aired on Belarusian TV. No, nothing is excluded. It can't be. Although Lukashenko, for this time of crisis, has changed all the officials and all the political structures. Вот, потому что либо были не очень лояльны, либо претендовали на на влияние. Дескать, коль ты на меня опираешься, то я тоже хочу участвовать в принятии решений. Вот всех таких он выбрал. Lukashenko is left with no one to turn to except Vladimir Putin, whose offer to send police reinforcements back in 2020 was a pivotal moment. Thanks to the support uh, during the crisis in 2020, Lukashenko was able to keep power. But that support came at a price. Deeper integration with Moscow, something Lukashenko usually tries hard to avoid. Lukashenko, he strongly believes that Belarus is only his country and he is not going to share his power with anyone. As a result, the increasingly isolated president is resorting to ever more dangerous tactics to neutralize his opponents abroad. The forced landing of a Ryanair jet in June to catch Roman Protasevich is a case in point. Protasevich had been editor-in-chief of the Telegram channel Nexter, now being run by colleagues in Warsaw. 
Я сначала не поверил в то, что мне говорит друг по поводу посадки этого самолета. Я думал, что это шутка, розыгрыш. Однако позже, конечно, начал возвращаться в реальность. И это было огромным таким неожиданным шоком для всех. With 3 million followers in Belarus, Nexter has long been an antidote to state propaganda. Мы призывали людей к забастовке, к тому, чтобы отстаивать права, присылать правду о том, что происходило. Мы получили десятки тысяч файлов, фото, видео, аудио, документов, свидетельствующих о нарушениях со стороны властей. The platform continues to show chilling footage of life over the border. And there's nothing Lukashenko can do about it. И, конечно, власти очень боялись нас. Они не могли заблокировать канал, потому что сайт можно заблокировать, телеграм канал не получается. The next office has a permanent police guard. Obviously, we are aware that there might be attempts at at the, at the lives even because this is the nature of these regimes. It wouldn't be the first time that opponents of the regime were assassinated on foreign soil. Most recently, Lukashenko stands accused of ordering the murder of Vitaly Shishov, whose hanging body was discovered in August in a forest near the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. He'd been badly beaten before death. Нам відкрито кримінальне провадження за ознаками злочину передбачено частиною першої статті 115 Кодексу України. Це умисне вбивство. Шешов was head of the Belarusian House Opposition Center in Kiev, which helps people to flee the regime. Work his girlfriend now continues. But providing this sort of help is not without risk, as Шешов knew only too well. Це за неділю до смерти он позвонил нашему другу и сказал, что у меня какое-то плохое предчувствие. Вот если что посмотришь, забожай на что все было в порядке. Шешов's fears proved tragically prophetic when he disappeared while out jogging. The police mounted a search in a nearby forest. But when Bajena and her friend Yura joined them, only Yura was allowed to enter. When he returned, Bajena could tell something was wrong. Я бегу к нему. Он меня оттаскивает, тащит обратно к подъезду, и я говорю, Юра, что, что там? Нашли что там? Он нашли, он не мог мне этого говорить. В общем-то, получился такой диалог, что я сама задавала вопросы, он просто отвечал мне, да или нет. И я живой, он мне, он молчит. Я говорю, Юра, он живой? Я кричала на весь район эти вопросы. Вот все, весь район слышал мой крик. Говорит, нет, я говорю, это не он. Лукашенко denies responsibility for the hanging. But Belarusian state TV makes it quite clear how the regime would like to deal with activists abroad. And activists at home may soon find themselves equally silenced. Rumors are rife that Lukashenko has ordered the construction of concentration camps. Получается, концлагеря информация обширная, но вкратце идет первая информация, которая поступила, это аудиозапись Крепенкова. Once again, Deputy Interior Minister Karpenkov explains what Lukashenko has in mind. Those destined for the new camps are people like Antonia Konovalova. Antonia's mother, Anna, escaped to Poland to prevent the authorities from seizing her grandchildren, Nastya and Vanya. My daughter took part in the election campaign. She gathered signatures for Svetlana Tikhanovsky. For this, her daughter and son-in-law were arrested and sentenced to five years. И вот Ваня в это время вот он задал вопрос такой: "Бабуля, а правда, что наша мама в тюрьме?" И я поняла, что мы вот эмоционально видно дома об этом разговаривали, и нам казалось, что ну он еще маленький мальчик, он этого ничего не понимает. 
То есть мы как бы <coughs> не подумали о том, <coughs> что мальчик этот у нас уже вырос, что он уже, что он уже повзрослел. Anna and many other exiles gather in Warsaw every Sunday to demonstrate against Lukashenko while they wait for their loved one's release. Он мне спрашивает, бабуля, а пять лет это сколько? Это долго? Это много? Я говорю, Ваня, что это очень много. Он меня спрашивает, а сколько это дней? Я говорю, Ваня, что это очень много дней. И он тогда вот так говорит, ну зачем? Anna's daughter is just one of countless thousands of victims of the crisis. But as the legions of his political detainees can attest, Lukashenko is clearly willing to keep breaching international norms. They can employ all means and measures that they can think of. And, uh, and Mr. Lukashenko, you know, he was promising uh, quite a lot of these actions where he, you know, he would smuggle a radioactive materials to the European Union. He promised to smuggle more drugs and uh, all sorts of things. So basically, you know, he is limited just by his nefarious imagination. All the same, when Lukashenko's regime began inviting migrants to Belarus and then started forcing them over the border into neighboring Poland and Lithuania, it took everyone by surprise. It's a completely new thing, this kind of a humanitarian blackmail that the Belarusian authorities are now trying to exert on Poland and generally speaking on the European Union. So they are really using people as bullets in this hybrid war. Because Poland and um, Lithuania have been supporting a Belarusian nation in order to ensure that they can actually exercise the democratic rights, Lukashenko is inducing migration waves. For the first time, a country, a, a regime, is bringing in people from the Middle Eastern countries, from faraway lands, deceiving them of easy passage to European Union. Lithuania and Poland have constructed fences along the border to stop the migrants. But they are also being prevented from returning to Belarus. Teams of activists like this one are bringing supplies to the migrants who are caught in no man's land and say they've been beaten by Belarusian border guards. <laughs> Unable to return to Belarus or enter Poland, the situation is desperate. A restriction zone has been established along the border to keep the press and NGOs out. We already have people who died because of the cold and now it's going to get worse. Some people already say that they are walking through the woods and they see bodies, dead bodies, and uh, I think there will be so much more deaths. They don't care about those people who are they bringing in. They don't care about the whole situation that they are creating. They just want one thing. They just want their sanctions to be removed. With tensions rising and reports of Belarusian border guards threatening to fire at their Polish counterparts, how serious is the risk of a wider conflict? The risk is unfortunately very big and I am absolutely certain that he is capable of escalating it towards a much more dangerous conflict using not just hybrid tools, hybrid warfare, but also the conventional ones. Не исключаю неких совершенно драматических событий, кровавых, гораздо более кровавых, чем это произошло уже в прошлом году.